Good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar, The Show Must Go On. Viva Broadway, hear our voices. I am Lina Delgado, Executive Director of the Colombian American Association. Like most other industries, Broadway has been silenced by the COVID-19 pandemic. During today's program, our, our distinguished guest will discuss the profound impact that the pandemic has had on Broadway community and the way forward for the industry. We also want to recognize the vibrant legacy the Latinx artists have contributed to the artists and what better excuse to bring two of uh, remarkable Colombian artists as part of this extraordinary panel. I couldn't be happier to welcome Sergio Trujillo, Julio Reyes, and Jack Nosworthy. Thank you for accepting our invitation to this program and sharing your time with us today. I would like also to welcome Alfonso Diaz, who will be moderating the conversation. Alfonso is a Colombian director and host with the international network Canal Nuestra Tele Internacional. He also serves as the entertainment correspondent for TNT24, the international news station geared to Spanish reaches more than 20, uh, sorry, speech uh, audiences around the world. He show Tenemos Que Hablar, reaches more than 20 countries. Alfonso has interviewed countless personalities in many diverse settings on the red carpet, at press junkets, concerts, and openings. These include Julianne Moore, Christian Stewart, George Clooney, Robert De Niro, Patrick Stewart, James Franco, Sergio Trujillo, Gloria Stefan, John De Guisamo, Sofia Vergara, and among others. Before we start the conversation, I would like to thank John Professional of the America Society and Viva Broadway here, our voices for partnering with us on this event. And the Colombian American Association team for the hard work on helping me to put this event together. Well, the show must go on. Alfonso, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Lena. Hello, everybody. It's wonderful to have this opportunity to have a conversation with people that I really admire, heroes of mine. Um, I'm going to do a little um, introduction for the three of them and I'm gonna start with some questions and we're going to start our discussion. Sergio Trujillo is a Tony and Lawrence Olivier Award winning director and choreographer to whom we owe wonderful shows like Ain't Too Proud, amazing, <laughs> Memphis and Jersey Boys. He's so amazing that at a certain point, he had four shows running simultaneously in the theater district. Two that I already mentioned, I mean, in Jersey Boys and Memphis, and also the Adams Family and Next to Normal. He was born in Colombia, and that is something he carries with pride everywhere he go. Next, it is my pleasure to introduce Julio Reyes Copelo, also Colombian, producer, pianist, arranger, composer, a man who has a power, an amazing gift to transform emotions into song. His gift allows him to work in all genres of music. He can do anything. He has written and produced for people like Mark Anthony, Ricky Martin, Alejandro Sanz, Jennifer Lopez, Diego Torres, Fonseca, Thalia, Paula Arenas, my friend, my dear friend, and many, many more. In 2013, Julio started the Miami Art House and Art House Record to discover, produce, and support young musicians. And our third panelist today is an actor who has an impressive career in film, television, and theater. And he was also in a Bon Jovi video, which makes him awesome in my life. <laughs> and um, Jack Nosworthy has shared the stage with Meryl Streep originated the role of, uh, of Armand in the musical Lestat. He's the only male actor who has played Peter Pan on Broadway, has played Attorney General Robert Kennedy in television, and has more than 50 credits. Very impressive. Please remember, before we start, that we will have a Q&A at the end of this session, so you can start writing your questions. And toward the end of this, we are going to address those questions. And here we go. I would like to start this conversation addressing the current situation in Broadway. This is a $1.8 billion industry that has been incredibly affected by the pandemic. 
And when I think of it, I think of the performers, the crews, and all of their families. The financial impact at this point is difficult to measure. The Actors Fund, for example, received 15,000 requests for aid in the first months of the pandemic. And there have been human losses to the virus, like Nick Cordero and the great Terence McNally. The spirit of Broadway, however, will live forever. So performers have found a way to communicate their feelings and share their talent virtually. So my first question is geared towards Jack. How do you see things from your perspective? Um, well, it's devastating to think that not only are, do we have all those losses, certainly the losses of, of human life that um, this horrible pandemic has, has um, taken from us, um, but in terms of performing and um, creating work, we've lost a platform for artists to actually express themselves and communicate human emotion to actually deal with this horrible pandemic. So it's kind of twofold. Um, it, it's awful all around. I think that um, what we're doing as artists now is we're looking to find opportunities to communicate and help one another because that's what art does, right? It somehow gives us a voice gives a voice to the uh, to people who can't speak, ways to understand their emotions and how they feel or how they should feel. And um, fortunately, because of situations like this, um, uh, virtual opportunities are um, emerging everywhere in um, on Broadway and, um, and beyond to create chances for audiences to connect not only with their favorite performers, but also um, to give them an opportunity to find out, wow, other people just like me are feeling the same. So it's, it's devastating. Um, I think our community has come together in a way like no other to raise money for one another. For example, you spoke of the Actors Fund um, and um, I, I currently work uh, for Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS, which is the largest funder of the Actors Fund. And we are finding that this community has been incredibly supportive of one another in raising funds, raising awareness, and um, and uh, you know, so it's um, it's it's just devastating. But uh, thanks to folks like you that are giving us the opportunity to talk about it, I think that um, once once the shutdown ends, which hopefully won't be too long, we'll be able to reunite and and enjoy art once again all together. In times like this, is when people like you decide to lend a hand to create something like uh, the celebration of Latinx heritage. Um, this show that you are putting together means we are here to fight for each other. We're here to support each other. How did the idea of putting this exact group of people together happen, Sergio? So <clears throat> I have um, been hoping to do this for the last four years. Um, I did a concert for, for Gloria Stefan for Viva Broadway four years ago, what we were doing on your feet. And uh, since then I've been wanting to do this concert live, performed in a Broadway theater. Um, when uh, the shutdown happened, I was actually on my way to the Broadway League with Jack. We were there to go meet, to have a production meeting about planning the event, which would have happened right now in September, alas, you know, the shutdown happened, the concert was canceled, but then a few weeks ago, they called, they called me back and they said, can you do the concert virtually? And I said, of course, of course I'll do it. First and foremost, because I have watched my husband Jack work 14, 16 hours every day, raising money for Broadway Cares Equity like Fight Aids for the, for the Actors Fund, for all of those needs. And so I felt like there was, I needed to also do something about it. And so, you know, I, because I had the idea, I immediately went, you know, to work and um, I began to call all of all of my friends um, who who jumped at the idea, at the, the idea of, of coming together to celebrate. But interestingly enough, when before uh, when I thought of it, I wanted it to be a celebration of of the talent 
of our culture. Mm -hmm. But since then, because of what has happened in our country, it, be, it took a different, a different tone. And that tone is, we are here, take notice, make a change. Um, because when I watch and when I'm so excited that, you know, we're doing this because I want everyone who's watching this to really see the concert on October 1st at eight o'clock. Um, it's on Facebook, right? Facebook Live? No, it's, uh, it'll be airing on uh, the Playbill, um, playbill.com and the Broadway League's channel um, uh, uh, on their page and also the, uh, the Playbill YouTube uh, channel. But so when I watch, so I've been getting all of the video tips because, you know, the other thing about this is that, you know, I'm asking Talia, you know, to like, you know, be in her home and, and, you know, although we all have time, we don't have time. Some people are, you know, just as busy. I'm sure you are as well. So, but when I get all these videos ranging from Talia to, you know, a young dancer who's never danced on Broadway or, you know, the range or, or Cheetah Rivera, you know, in doing a, a, an appeal for me to, another singer, actor, Ivan Hernandez. When I watch these videos, Antonio Banderas. Antonio Banderas, you know, sending me his video because I saw his production of A Chorus Line just in February and I asked him if, because I want everyone to see him dance because he did it extraordinarily. When I watch those videos, two things happen. I am humbled by all their talent and their efforts. And then I think, here's what happens when these songs are delivered by the people who should have been delivering these songs throughout. For instance, Impossible Dream from Man of La Mancha. It has never been sung, at least to my knowledge, on Broadway by a Latino man. And today I received the video from Ivan Hernandez who's in Germany and sang the song. And I just, the, the whole thing just took a totally different meaning. Impossible Dream coming out of his mouth, those words, meant something totally different. And that is why I'm doing this. That's that, why I'm doing this. That makes me think of your post today in Instagram with your photo where it says, I come from Cali, Colombia, and I was able to achieve this, so can you. Very inspirational. Well, this brings me to Julio. And um, so of course this event is has a purpose and there is going to be funds collected and they are going to go to Broadway Cares and Equity Fight Aids and Broadway Bridges. So I'm going to give you the difficult task, Julio, because I know this is a hard question. At the beginning of the pandemic, we all needed very much desperately music in our lives. And many performers started to give us their music because it was a moment of need. But progressively, we have come to understand that many performers need to survive and their families. And so now we're learning the culture of paying for the music we take virtually. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Well, I, I think there is no uh, better moment to realize that uh, music uh, is essential is not ornamental and is in these times of of difficulty where 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 we realize that because there is an uh, i mean the amazing power of music that makes reality lighter and that's something that everybody everybody needs to be conscious about it music is not ornamental music is uh, it it's is necessary and i uh, as you mentioned i mean this is a very difficult situation but part of the solution is is just to make you know to be to make consciousness about that about the the artists the perform the, the people that are that are spending their lives in in you know to entertain mm -hmm. to make your reality lighter because that's the, the miracle of, of, well, of art and music in particular has this amazing au automatic power to change the perspective of reality. It has the ability to create this part of the universe where, where you have a completely different percep perception of the, of the reality and that has a value. And that's something that people need to understand, mm -hmm. need to support your artists, your, the, the musicians. They are not ornamental. 
they are essential. It's, that makes us thinking um, performers are not by themselves. They have a group of musicians that go with them. They have singers that are performing with them and all of them have families. And that happens in Broadway too. The costumes, the lighting, there are so many families that have been impacted. And um, I want to go back to, to, to Jack because you live this reality on a daily basis. Um, what do you think is that light at the end of the tunnel that people in the, in, in the theater district are seeing now? Yeah, um, well, um, I think I have two answers to your question. One is in response to Julio talking about the music giving us life. Mm -hmm. It's just so interesting to me to think that it's we're giving life to the music. It's this circle of life, you know, the, the supporting our artists and then the artists are supporting us through their music and, and the idea that people are creating work that is in raising funds and people are supporting the work. And it's this constant circle of people giving and positivity that um, it may start with the artist, but it, extend, it extends further to the audience and it's a give and take that is really beautiful. That was, that was really well put, Julio. Thank you for, for giving us that. Um, I, I think the light at the end of the tunnel for people who are suffering right now is, is similar to what we experience as artists. It's, um, it's hope and it's knowing that we've all struggled and that there's this collective struggle that's happening right now and we're standing beside one another. And, um, and, and I think the idea that we've been through a lot as, um, you know, as a community and, um, and we will get through this as well. Um, the, the, to, to think about a light at the end of the tunnel, it, it's, um, it's pretty dark in the tunnel right now. And, and I think we all need to hold hands and hang on really tightly because pretty soon there's gonna be a crack and, and we're all gonna see it and, and we're gonna find our way. So. I, I think the light is just our own belief that um, that change will come and and we will get through this together. And right now, um, we all just have to hang on tight. Sergio, I wanted to ask you about the presence of Latinos in Broadway because um, a few days ago I had a conversation with somebody and they told me, oh, because now we have a lot of Latinos in Broadway. And I turned around with my eyes wide open and said, no. Today, because we have social media, you see them more. But in Broadway, Latinos have been there for decades, in front or behind the curtains. Um, tell me about that part. How do you see the Latino presence in that district? Well, I can't, I can't deny that there has been, I think, because of exposure to the arts. Let me just go back a little bit. I, I grew up my family growing up as a Colombian in a family where theater was not the focus, you know, that we didn't get exposed to going to musicals or to plays or to symphonies. That's, that's just socially, that's not what happened to me. I found it on my own. I think that in the last few years, at least in, at least in, the, in, a, in a decade or so, specifically um, with through one organization called Revolución Latina, which teaches kids and all of, New York and neighboring and um, Queens and, and, and the Bronx, um, they, take, they te teach children about dance and music and drama. And the exposure to those allows a greater awareness. Um, so what I've noticed since I've been here in New York City, because I've been here for 30 years and I got here as a, I, be, I, was, I arrived here um, on a quest to dance on Broadway. When I showed up, you know, there wasn't, there wasn't as many Latinx dancers, actors, not as many as there are now. And a lot of that has to do with education, exposure. Do I wish there was more? Of course I do. Um, is the, are they out there? Of course they are. But, you know, just, I think, I think that, that in, in terms of, of time and evolution, it is going to happen. But I think that if, if we are allowed to have the opportunity of stepping on, on a stage and delivering, then 
the chances of someone, a younger person coming to see a show that is Latino and seeing themselves on stage is greater and therefore a greater chance of success, mm -hmm. of inspiration. And then of course, you know, the numbers will increase. And now I want to transport that into the business of music. Julio, there was, there was a time where the Latino element was like exotic. Then it became the normal and now we are high there in terms of presence in the lists, in the uh, playlists, and we are becoming something humongous. How do you see that? And how do you see that, how do you understand the impact of the sounds that we bring into the industry? Yeah, it's very interesting. It's very, it, it's amazing. I, I have a theory about it. I mean, I'm, I'm myself, I'm, I am from a generation of Colombians that left the country uh, when things were really, really bad, you know, mm -hmm. and, and life didn't, didn't have a price. It was a time of, you know, where, where you were, I mean, we were living with, with death every day. And I think that that made us like very, very passionate people because we, we were celebrating life every day. We didn't know if a uh, 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 goodbye, it was gonna be the last one. And uh, I think that's something that changed a whole generation of, of wealth and specific a lot of artists from Colombia that really, you know, made us very passionate about celebrating life. Mm -hmm. And that uh, translated into sounds of celebration of life and i think that's been that's been in my uh, my opinion that's my theory that's been the success of 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 the latin sounds it's not only the sound it's the spirit behind which is a spirit of of celebration of endurance of uh um, i think we are very professional in handling difficult situations because we grew up you know being happy with nothing And, and that, that's the lesson that, that, that we as Latino people can, should share with, with the world, you know? We just need to be, we, we can be happy with, with nothing. And we, we are able to celebrate that, the life. Uh, and, and that's what is in the spirit of Latin music. And that's why it's getting so, so popular, I think. Well, and this brings the two of you, the three of you together, because you're doing something special. Before we started this, this uh, conversation, this session, Sergio disclosed something that made me very excited. And it's the fact that the show is going to include the past, the present, and amazing surprising for the future. Please, tell me about that. Sergio? Sergio? Yes. I'm oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> when, uh, when, I can, when we conceived the the concert again you know it was at a different time and i wasn't thinking about the future uh, but during the lockdown i began to work with jack and actually began to work on a various original musicals and most of them are of latinx content and um, um the hope with this concert was to also introduce new talent uh, and, and new musicals uh, and one of the the musicals that I wanted to highlight was a musical by the name of Lives in Limbo. Uh, and it's inspired by a uh, book that was written by a Harvard Law professor, Roberto Gonzalez, and where he followed the lives of 150 undocumented immigrants for 12 years. Uh, and we adapted it into a musical, a beautiful musical. Um, for the last six, uh, for a few months, we, we looked for the writing team Uh, we had our author, but we were looking for the music team. And through uh, a, a, a search, um, a, a, an amazing search, we found Julio. And it was a blessing because Julio was like the one that just made it all fall into place beautifully. And um, so in the concert, we're going to feature one of the songs from Lives in Limbo. The song is called um, Every Day. And one of the things that I asked the composers as they were sending in their materials was that I wanted the sound to reflect the sound of a Latinx America. You know, not Latin America, but Latinx 
America? Like, what is that sound for all of us? And Julio found like a hybrid of so many, so many influences, and and he created a beautiful, just, just, and it's also the 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 wonderful thing about that song is is that he's able to marry both theater and pop, and and come up with a beautiful recipe that is incredibly melodic, and just hummable, and 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 just it just takes you on a journey. So you'll be able to to listen to that in the concert. I insist the man has a power. Julio, how do you do that? There's like really there are songs by your your proteges that I have interviewed that I listen to them and I really connect on a very emotional level. These songs move me, transport me, tell me stories about my past, things like that. When you see that effect that that those things cause in people, how do you feel about that? <laughs> I feel great. Uh, first of all, I mean, it's been such a pleasure to meet Sergio. I mean, it's a person that I really, really admire. And uh, it, this is new for me. This is so, so exciting. So exciting because it's another outlet for for my old soul. <laughs> and, <laughs> and that's my way to answer your your question because I, I think I, I, I had some so many lives i think i <laughs> and i i don't know but i have so many stories i started as a as a classical musician i graduated as a classical pianist i i i have the drama of of chopin on my on my soul and my fingers and uh, i i i was able to channel that into mark anthony's aura at the end uh and and i also do film scoring i mean the the I mean, the the real thing is that my love and respect for music is endless. And I think uh, it saved my life. And it saved my life. And it's somehow, it's always, it's always saving saving the lives of, of people. And that, that's been my motto, always, always. I have so much respect for, for the ability to transform uh, people through music. And that's something that I'm, I'm witnessing every day for everything that I do, uh, because everything that emotionally is uh, why is in me when, when I'm creating, it is supernatural, but it's on the DNA of the music. And mm -hmm. that's when, and when people listen to the music, they, they just get it in a, in a beautiful language. It's, it's an emotional language. It's something that you can enjoy without having to rationalize, which is great. I mean, you just, it's a spiritual language, you know? That's the demonstration, this is a spiritual. This is not, it, it, it's not tangible. It's not for your mind to understand. Is the, that's, that's where I, I live and I try to live my life in a super supernatural way every day. I try. <laughs> <laughs> Very successfully. Jack, you're the creative director for Viva Broadway. So of course we have all of those emotions, we have all of these pieces, we have all of, all of this material to work with. How is that task for you? Because now I understand with everything that we have heard, putting together something like this must be very complicated. Um, well, I, I think that we have the same artistic ambition, Sergio and I. Would you agree? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Thank God. <laughs> I mean, I, it looked at me funny, and I. Thought, uh, uh, we have the same artistic ambition, which is really key to any kind of successful endeavor, um, on on a small scale and on a large scale. And I think one of the things that helps bring it together is our own belief and and the importance of in in this current social situation, and and again the pandemic that um, it's, Im it's important to give, literally hear people's voices. And, it, and, and in, in this particular show, um, giving voice to a brown voice, right? Um, so we both believe that America is, is shifting color. You know, we're becoming a, a country that is multiracial. We are a country that's multiracial and that, that giving voice to, um, or giving opportunities to brown voices is, is at the heart of what this country is. And so when I think about the complexities and how difficult it is to bring all of this together, talking about these 
new shows and new voices and new writers and new composers and hearing Julio talk about um, his protege or you talk about his proteges, the idea that this is going to allow new artists to be heard is something that always at the end of the day you go, okay, it's really challenging, but we can do it because we have to do it. We have a responsibility to do it. And so um, that's how I feel. <laughs> Thank you. How big is the challenge of virtually choreograph something? Oh, well, it's, well <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's asking my dancers that, you know, but first of all, there are, there are rules about what I can and can't do, by the way. So everyone has to, they, they have to tape themselves at home. They cannot do it outside. It has to, they have to do it themselves. So teaching the information virtually is, is just like, you know, I'm from a different time, you know, <laughs> I need to be in a room <laughs> with them. Um, and luckily I have a wonderful associate choreographer, Luis Salgado, who's working by my side. He's actually in Puerto Rico. So I'm teaching him the choreography. We're putting it on videos. We're sending it to the dancers. The dancers are sending us their videos and we're giving them notes to that. But the other thing is, is that I asked the dancers, I said, I do not want any furniture in the shot. I want it clear. I want a clear wall. I don't want anything because I want to be able to edit it properly. I don't want any clutter because it wouldn't let, you know, I wanted them to do it either in a patio or in a park. I wanted palm trees because one of the, we're only doing two big dance numbers. We're doing Tradición from On Your Feet and we're doing In the Heights mm -hmm. from, from the, in the, the opening number. So, you know, it, it's, and then I've, again, I've been getting the videos in the last couple of days and to just see the dancers like figure out like how to light themselves because they don't, you know, they don't have professional lighting, you know, like they have a lamp here. I can see that the lamp is there and how they shifted it. You know, it's like, it's like, um, you know, um, a primitive theater making um, <laughs> in a new, in, and in a new way. And, you know, they're, I've asked them to have costumes. You know, I said, can you pull this kind of color? So, but it's the effort of how everyone is pulling together, you know, out of the kindness and all of, all of that is, is heartwarming. I think the COVID has shown a dark side and we were mentioning that before, but it also has brought the best in the human heart, right? And, yeah. and that is also something that I see in musicians. I have been doing nonstop interviews, Julio, with uh, independent musicians, some other that are well-established. And everybody's trying to be creative and finding a way to transmit their product, their songs, to share their music. And there have been very creative videos during the pandemic. What do you think about that? <laughs> that's, that's great. That's great. It, it is the, I, I see everything under the light of, of music, you know? If you don't have dissonance in music, you cannot enjoy consonance. And that's a pretty simple. I mean, we are, we are going through dissonant times, but we need to somehow learn to enjoy this, this, this moment and be creative about it. And actually this is pushing the limits of, of uh, creativity, you know? I've seen exactly a lot of, uh, a lot of the restrictions uh, that, that, that Sergio was, was talking about. I mean, it's, uh, they're actually, you know, go back to, Go back to go go the go back to basics that that we need all, always you know to okay let's connect with the the essential you know it's the what what is the essential in a performance is is still the emotional aspect it's not necessarily the technical aspect you know it is the the, the ability to, to transmit without having all the the resources maybe but uh, it it's a great 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 uh, check you know a reality check that that is making us even i mean more creative and uh, more that we're gonna get more empathy mm -hmm. uh, out of this definitely yeah this time has allowed us for us to 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 be creative as i was saying but also there are romantics like me all over the planet and i'm sorry but i want to be seated again soon as soon as possible in a theater to see a musical or a show. I need to be in a concert screaming with a multitude around me. And um, I want to have your input um, 
from the three of you regarding that unparalleled experience of the audience? Sergio? I can go. Oh, you you going to go? No, you, you, no, you do it. I was just going to say that, like you, I, I agree that, you know, there's nothing like uh, an experience uh, within a theater or a concert hall with a group of people. It, it's unparalleled. You know, that that group of people, if, if the performer is doing a, a, you know, touring with a show, an artist, or if the Broadway show that's touring or on Broadway, that group of people that comes together for that night, um, including the audience, will never be together like that again. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's this unique and original experience that only these people will have on that night. And and there's something about that that's incredibly special, and it's it's uh, you feed off of it. So, like like you, Alfonso, um, I I feel the same way. I'm I'm anxious for that to come back. I'm looking forward to having that experience again. And um and so I I I I think it'll be um I think it'll be really cathartic when it actually happens. And people once it comes back, we'll come back fast. We'll come back ready to go. People will be dying to congregate and enjoy art together. Thank you, Jack. Um, you know, the, the, <clears throat> the saddest thing about what's happening right now is, is that I can speak to Ain't Too Proud and what's been going on with our, in our country socially and politically in the last six months. And there are moments in Ain't Too Proud that are the mirror that are so incredibly that are so powerful because they're they're a reminder of the pain that is this country has gone through you know because in our show the temptations go through through the all of this the civil unrest that happened in the 60s all of all of the racism that they experienced in early on in their career and somehow that hasn't gone away and or the riots um, that happened in the late 60s as well. And I so wish that, that audiences can go back into the theater so they can experience this moment again and either use it as a way to continue to ignite conversation so that we can create or platforms for change or use it as a way for someone to use it for comfort because mm -hmm. music can do that and the power of the music and those stories and the fact that they this group of individuals were able to persevere and survive through those times and i think because of that you know i i miss it and i can't i want it and and i wish so wish that we could gather again yeah. you? yeah i couldn't agree more with 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 that uh, sergio and, and and this this been a year of of learning that we we took a lot of things for granted and, and that that i think it's been like the 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 main lesson here and and we're gonna we're gonna get i think uh, this whole year has been that you know uh we shouldn't take anything anything for granted uh to be surrounded to to hug a friend to to, to you know to say I love you to a, to a person you love it's it's something that it it has a different meaning now and we we are definitely gonna go back and I'm I'm a hundred percent sure that we're gonna enjoy a lot more everything that is gonna unite us definitely I have no doubt there is something that um calls my attention and is the fact that if the US Latinos, if we were our own nation, we will be the world's seventh largest gross domestic product at <laughs> 2.13 trillion. This is according to a report by the Latino Donor Collaborative. We could be a country that will be so powerful. And sometimes we're kind of dismissive of that fact. We are very powerful. We can transform whatever we want. And I think that everything that is happening is pushing us toward that place. What do you guys think? 
Yeah, man, I'm going to answer that, guys, because I feel very strong about this. You know, we spent so much time trying to be independent of each other. You know, Colombians, Cubans, Puerto Ricans, trying to declare our own independence, our own identity, trying to be different. And I think, um, in a way, that's why the Black Lives Matter movement is so strong, is because all 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 blacks are together. You know, we we as as Latinx should stand together and mm-hmm. and not to, not to publicize our concert but w- like doing this concert shows me shows us will show everyone and uh, including the Latinx community that will watch it that together en masse the talent that you guys are going to see is explosive and that is you know as you say together we could be a country Together we can build many shows. <laughs> Together we could, if we could have that opportunity. Look, I, it, our ca- we have a cast of seventy-five people in this concert. That's like three Broadway shows. <laughs> and if that country that you could be all tune in to Viva Broadway, hear our voices, they can start right there. <laughs> yeah, that's right. October first. No, no, I'm not. October first. I'm not publicizing. And make a donation at broadwaycares.org backslash Viva Broadway 2020. <laughs> no, Very important. But 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 you know, but again, that and and the fact that we are coming together, you know, as as a as a nation, as a Latinx nation. Oh, oh my God, that actually, is... I should be like this. <laughs> it's great power with great power comes great responsibility and i think that that should be the agenda that we forget about what makes us different from each other and we start understanding that together we can achieve things that we never thought possible it is 2 45 so i'm going to uh, go to one of the questions that people are asking Gabriela Villalobos, about the topic you're talking about, we see that most of the Latin representation on Broadway are Latin people born in the United States. What does Sergio Trujillo think about the opportunities for Latinos born in Latin America and what advice can he give to us who want to be on Broadway but were born and raised here in Latin America? We have an international audience. Right, so I was born in Cali, Colombia. Um, so, and I, and I got here, um, you know, it took a road full of, of many sacrifices and it's, and it's, uh, and it was an arduous road. It was, a, it was not, it was not easy. It hasn't been easy. I've been together with Jack for 30 years and, um, that's, you know, not half a lifetime, but a lifetime and both together, we, you know, he knows the, the journey that I've been on, um, you know, I, I just want to remind you too, though, that although Broadway is the place where we all dream of being, that if you can't get to Broadway, you have to create your own journey, write your own destiny, and create your own version of Broadway in your own country. Because I feel like, you know, I don't think that there is anything wrong with becoming the best at, you know, at whatever it is that you do in Colombia or in Peru or in Argentina and producing shows, writing shows, choreographing shows, directing shows, musicals specifically, if that is what you dream. So, you know, although it is the goal, I think that, you know, be a, a, a big fish in a small pond in your own country. Question for Jack, would you please repeat the information, time, date for the concert and where to do the donations? Yes, of course. Um, so uh, Viva Broadway Here Our Voices will be streamed live on uh, Playbill.com, Playbill's YouTube channel, and also uh, on the Broadway League's uh, uh, page. Um, and, um, and you can make donations at broadwaycares.org backslash Viva Broadway 2020. And it will run for four days. So it will be up on the live stream for four days. And I should say that, um, I should also add that um, we're all sitting here today because of Sergio's idea to create the show, but um, um, we wouldn't have this live stream and we wouldn't have this opportunity without, um, without our, our, our uh, 
producers who are uh, the Broadway League and also Playbill.com because uh, they're, they're really um, the infrastructure and the partners that are helping us be able to present all of this wonderful work for Sergio's ideas. So thank you to them as well. Next question, which other performance are we going to see? Oh, wow, okay. So it's, first of all, it's a long list. <laughs> I, I can't, I mean, to gather all that I've gathered on this concert, it just, it blows me away. Um, oh my God. Well, I have a secret. Um, it hasn't been announced yet. So only you know about it, but don't text it, don't social media, don't do anything. It's our, it's our secret. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> um, so, and it's, it, it's incredibly exciting, but um, Ruben Blades will be appearing. Um, mm -hmm. I'm actually, yes, Ruben Blades. Um, so that is huge. Um, you're going to see Antonio Banderas uh, perform. I, as I mentioned to you earlier, I went to see him uh, do um, dance perform in, in a production of A Chorus Line in his theater in Malaga, Spain. And it's, he's absolutely spectacular. You're going to see the original cast of In the Heights. Um, you're going to see Anthony Ramos, who's playing who's Navi in the film of uh, In the Heights. You're going yeah. to see Ariana DeBose, who's playing Anita in the Steven Spielberg uh, revival. I mean, sorry, movie of In the Heights. I mean, West Side, a, a West Side Story. Story story. You're going to see ba uh, Melissa Barrera, who is the star of the In the Heights movie. You're going to see new shows like Lives in Limbo with music by Julio, by, by Julio Reyes Copello. And La Santa Cecilia will be performing one of their songs from Like Water for Chocolate. Our friend, our brother, John Leguizamo, um, will be premiering one of his songs from his show, Kiss My Astic, which is hilarious. Um, and I think we can't forget the past. Obviously, Cheetah Rivera. And we have one of my, one of my favorite guests is uh, Lucy Arnaz. Because if it wasn't for Desi Arnaz, you know, I'm not sure, you know, it would have, I think it would have taken a while for, for us to get here. Uh, so those are, those are some of the, the artists. And then we have some young up and coming talent that is, that will blow you away. Now I have a question on my own and it's about something that you just mentioned and is the movie In the Heights it was supposed to open. They had to move the, the release of the film because of the, of, the, of the COVID, of the pandemic. Is this going to be our big Black Panther moment for the Latino community, maybe? Sergio? I, I think so. I think so. I, I, I know so. I think so. I think so. I think it's time. I think it's time. It'll happen. And of course, I, I forgot to mention uh, in good time in Alfonso that Lin Manuel will also be appearing as well as Luis Miranda. So, you know, he's, he's our, he's our, he's our greatest hero and he's pretty brilliant. So. I think one, I think one of the really exciting uh, things that you connect on, on the show is um, that when you think about Lucy Arnaz and you think about her father and how he came to this country and how he changed the perception of Latinos um, in America, um, when you see Lucy talk about her father and her heritage and her family and claiming her own, her own, um, her own uh, um, uh, Latin American roots, and then you immediately see the connection to Lin-Manuel and you immediately see how, oh my goodness, Desi arriving in America, without Desi being in America, we almost wouldn't have Lynn Manuel and the brilliance of In the Heights of yes. Hamilton and everything yes. else that's happening. So you actually, we actually capture that a little bit in our show. So it's it's just it's thrilling to see it happen in one to see that that thread of history follow all the way through the evening. I would like to um, invite right now uh, Lina Delgado back the executive director at the Colombian American Association, because I think that she has more questions. Lina, are you there? I think that she's not there yet, but in the meantime, we can continue talking about the experience of these films. So it's not only this, um, probably there is 
something in the classics that needs to be retold, like the example of West Side Story, where um, the element, the Latino element was there. And um, it's something that we need to remind people that has been there. I mean, historically, there are things that we have to bring back in order for them to be understood by new generations. What do you think about that? Jack? Julio, maybe? Yeah, Julio. Julio. Oh, well, no, that's an amazing uh, uh, moment in, uh, in, in life. And the, the line, as, as, uh, as, as Jack was mentioning, it's, unbelie it's unbelievable. It's, it's almost supernatural how this connection, you know, in, uh, in, in, the, in history uh, make us all part, part of it, you know. I mean, with, with Thai story, it's a, it's a, it's 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 in a, in our DNA, and it's it's again, it's it's part of what we are doing. It's part of our voice, and it's uh, it, it needs to be yeah, mm -hmm. it it needs to be uh, known. But new, new you know new generations, they they need to know about this. We we have to keep this alive because it is part of of who we are definitely. Yeah. Next question. Jack, we have seen movie screenings and concerts in parking lots or some other open spaces. Do you see Broadway doing something like that anytime soon? Hmm. Well, um, not certainly not Broadway because um, just the business model itself wouldn't really allow for Broadway and um, Broadway performances to be performed in parking lots outside and social distance. Um, um, it's, it's a commercial entity and in order for it to actually um, uh, uh, function, it needs to have an audience and a capacity of an audience for it to function. However, um, there are certainly uh, creative um, uh, downtown um, uh, e e regional theater productions of um, ideas that are germinating about how to, um, who's our friend that did the uh, performance in the forest? Um, Michael uh, Arden, Michael Arden um, creating works that might happen where you're sitting in your car and it's an experience that's happening around you. So it's this um, uh, a performance art that is theater. However, I think for Broadway, if that's the specific question, I think that would be really challenging. But, um, but, but other creative entities that are live experiences, sure. Sergio. Victor Morales wants to know, how can a Colombian musical theater student ever get to Broadway? I think, yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> um, well, yes, I mean, I think here's the deal. I think when, when I decided that I was going to, to be a dancer, that I wanted to be on Broadway, I worked my ass off. I, you know, I, 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 um, I think it takes so much work and dedication. I think you have to have, you have so much, such tenacity, such perseverance, um, and it requires you to make so many sacrifices and you have to be ready to make those sacrifices. Again, I caution you because I want, I want you to continue to strive to come to Broadway, but I do want, I, I want you to strive to be the best that you can be for yourself regardless of, of what the, what the, the final goal is. Cause I think, I think that it teaches you so much, so much about life, so much about yourself and, um, and then and spiritually it can bring you so much peace. So strive to come to New York, keep on working hard. It's a, it's a long hard road with many sacrifices. And you know, if it's meant to be, it'll happen. The final question goes to Julio from Anonymous Attendee. Julio, as founder of the Art House, how do you think COVID will change the way that new artists emerge? I think it's, it's I mean, basically uh, what we've been talking about, no? We, we are getting creative by the restrictions that this is, this is uh, you know, this reality is, is giving us. But, um, uh, actually, the consumption of music during this time has increased a lot, and 
again, as I said at the beginning, this is a time where everybody's realizing that entertainment is not ornamental, it's essential, it's, it's the food for the soul. And I think uh, that is actually uh, creating a platform uh, for, for real talent to shine and 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 uh, of course the the regular social media uh, as as the beginning of the uh, as the first platform for a for a beginner uh, it's it's definitely the the first step that we, that we need to address but um, I I I really encourage everybody that is starting right now to feel very res responsible and to feel their, their responsibility that we have as as entertainers to to really create you know a impact by uh by being you know by being human and and that's that's the most important part that we have to that, that we have to address and always strive for for the best version because there's a lot of of entertainment today in the in the social media that is is not actually getting the the best of 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 human beings so it's it's always to to put the bar high that's always my my advice Nina has given me the chance to ask another two questions that we have here thank you so much Martin Acuña Sergio spoke about the political situation in the United States and its relationship with ain't no ain't too proud how do you think that theater can help change the current political situation happening in Colombia right now? Parenthesis also applies to the U.S. Um, mm, you know, that's tough. That's tough. Um, you know, I, 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 I can't, uh, I'm going to be honest, I can't, you know, the, the, I've grown up here in America. Um, I haven't spent a lot of time in Colombia, so I have. I'm, I'm slightly disconnected um, from what is happening in Colombia. Really, um, I did have a chance to go visit Cali uh, most recently in February. I'm not. I'm not pivoting from the question, but just so understand how I can answer. Um, I did notice. And I was only there for a week, but I did notice, and I was in Cali, I did notice that there that it had changed in the last 10 years, there's been a lot of change in Cali. It's if I felt that it was safer. I felt like the city had taken a turn. And I noticed that there was a lot of push for the arts. Um, I went to I went on a on a visit that I was brought by two friends of mine, uh, the minister, ex-minister of culture. Um, and um, they, um, they took me to a number of places, uh, theaters uh, and dance schools that they were building. And, you know, I feel like violent, if art brings, art can bring peace in some way. Um, but I'm I'm sorry I'm not I'm it's it's hard for me to answer that question because I'm I'm, I'm disconnected I can only I can only relate to what is happening here. Um, is there is some Julio Jack uh, Alfonso? What do you guys think? I, I really this one is this it's a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think tricky I think, one. Yeah, I think this is um uh, this is something that is related to the way the culture in which you grow. That's and right. it's about education and it's about principles and it's about family and it's something that it's I think that we somehow are geared towards there and I remain hopeful that um, everything that we are living is pushing the new generations to understand the need to work together something that we have mentioned during this mm -hmm. session the need to rely on each other the need to be aware of what's going on and i think that progressively that will end up producing that needed change I'm not <laughs> as you can tell. all right time for our last question 
Um, hi, I'm Laura Maria Real Avila. Hi, I'm Laura. I study musical theater here in Colombia. How do you believe this area in this country can be powered up? How can we show Colombians these beautiful masterpieces and make our own language for Colombian musical theater? Wow. That one I can answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think, I think that most, so I'm gonna go back to where I was trying to head the last time, but I most recently was brought to Cali by uh, Mariana Garces, the ex-minister of culture and her, and her husband, Paul. And um, they're trying desperately to create places, uh, schools, institutions, where children can go learn music, where they can learn dance, where they can learn drama. And they reached out to me because they have the desire of, of writing an original musical. And I found us, and, and, and because of people like them, the movement that they're creating, the awareness that they're creating and bringing all of these children, for instance, they, they, they have built this music school, Julio, and I don't know if you know about it, but they have in Cali, right in the middle of the ghetto, they have built this beautiful music school where kids from the age, from kindergarten to high school can go and study music and they're selected. And all of these kids come from, from, from an area that is very dangerous where crime is at its highest. Um, so, you know, there are people out there in Cali, there are people there in Colombia that are, that are striving to, create art, to, to create places, um, sanctuaries where people can go learn and uh, expose younger adults to all sorts of, not only musicals, but music and dance and, and drama. Thank you so much. It has been a great pleasure to talk to the three of you. Lina, welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back. Uh... Thank you, guys. Thank you, Sergio, Julio, Jack, and Alfonso for making this amazing program. We could keep talking and talking about art, Four about hours. Colombia. <laughs> so maybe we can do events. Uh, but the most important thing here is that you remind us that art can bring us together and that we are strong together and we can pass all those difficulties uh, as a community, that we are not a Colombian, Venezuelan, Cubans, we are uh, Latinos. And, and thank you, Jack, for all the effort that you are putting, uh, creating this concert, and all, I know all the other things that you are doing for helping the, the Broadway, community, Broadway community and the Latinos. Thank so you. for all the for all the participants that attending today's event, Please don't forget to join us on Viva Broadway concert on October 1st. We are going to send all the information so you guys don't uh, forget to, to be on this amazing uh, concert. Thank you to you again and have a nice day and hope to have you guys again anytime soon. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, everybody. you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.